Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Um, welcome to this uh, short talk on successful management of childhood atopic dermatitis. Uh, it's a very practically focused talk. These are my industry disclosures. We're all familiar that atopic dermatitis takes lots of different forms uh, from the generalized form that we see in infants to more specific flexural forms in, in young children. Uh, we're also aware that it has a great range of presentations that are ethnic uh, dependent, so it behaves differently in different skin. Atopic dermatitis is common. It affects uh, about 20% of children in the urbanized world. Uh, this is a fairly typically severe infant. We're going to talk about how to manage this case uh, shortly as we go through the presentation. A reminder that uh, the appearances move around with age. So we see a lot of the on the cheeks and on the general body in uh, early life. And then we move to the more flexural areas like the neck and the knee flexures and the palms and soles uh, throughout uh, teenage years. When we look in the close up, we can see some of the key findings such as fasciculation and fissures of the skin. And th these, are, these are what drive the itch and drive the pain in uh, atopic dermatitis. We can see some little stigma like loss of the outer eyebrow, eyelid, like the Denny Morgan folds under the eye and hyperlinear palms. These are all worth looking out for in your infant patients. And just a reminder that atopic dermatitis looks really different on skin and skin of color. We'll see less redness and more of dusky purple color. And it's really careful, uh, really important to carefully assess skin of color where we can see uh, the atopic dermatitis can be very severe, but can look a little differently. And we can see here post-inflammatory pigmentation in, a, in an African child. The way flexural eczema can look very differently in African skin is something that you need to familiarize yourself with. And again, head and neck eczema, it all looks a little different and it requires some degree of familiarization. All of these factors drive endotypes in atopic dermatitis, ethnicity, the lifetime history of exposures known as the exposome, the immune profile is type 2, type 17, or type 22, gen genetic factors, and the age of onset and the sensitization profile will all uh, change the presentation of atopic dermatitis. How do we successfully treat it? We manage inflammation, we treat infection if it's there, we avoid allergens if they're relevant. So let's look at managing inflammation and why do topical corticosteroids not work often in atopic dermatitis? Often too little is prescribed, the potencies are wrong, the duration is wrong, the regimen is too complex, that's important. Steroid phobia or steroid resistance is common. Pharmacists get in the way sometimes with our instructions. A simple reminder, one fingertip unit is a half a gram and that covers two of the palms of that finger. So we know that if we're measuring out these, uh, this is an adult, but we can make it pediatric uh, appropriate as well. So an adult would take 36 fingertip units and we can break that down by age into smaller units for smaller people. But it's important to know we're prescribing the right amount. Work out how much each your patient needs based on their size. You can measure out with your hands how many fingertips they need and explain to the uh, parents or the patient how much they need to use and write the actual volumes on the prescription. That's really important to get good results. If there's no infection, pick a single strength for the face and a weak and a stronger one for the body. Something like hydrocortisone to the face, betamethasone or hydrocortisone is fine on the body. These are uh, readily available in the UK and in Ireland, but there will be specific uh, preparations in different countries. Know and understand the relative potency of the steroids. So from, from weak to strong, and these are calculated using um, vasoconstriction assays, they, it's good to have a sense of that and to share it with your patients and be aware of it. I use a little uh, photo mnemonic uh, just so patients who maybe don't have English as their first language or who have uh, poor literacy skills, they can point out exactly what they're using and how much. And I ask them how many grams they've used in the last few months or few weeks. And I break these down into mild, moderate, potent and very potent preparations. How long do we use? Well, this is individualized. You have to, to define the treatment in relation to the child in front of you. But if it's not infected eczema, we'll use something like betamethasone or de-ointment for two weeks and then transition down to weekend maintenance therapy. And that will depend on how long the child needs and how severe the eczema is. 
Why does it fail? Again, going back to that list, too little, too little potency, too short of a duration, steroid phobia, and pharmacy sometimes altering instructions. So it's important to have really good communication about what you expect. Most importantly, the regimens can be too complex. So keep it simple and you'll get better results. And the reason we keep it simple is just use one or two maximum uh, preparations, ideally ointments if we're talking about young children. Don't worry too much about bathing. There's no evidence it makes a big difference. Don't make it complicated. Don't worry a lot about moisturizing either, at least initially. The role of moisturizers is unproven. Use the steroids just once a day, that works best, and review after six weeks because you want to see have you got a benefit after using these treatments. Just an important thing, treating eczema is really a problem solving uh, exercise that we're handing to our parents. And a lot of people cannot understand complex uh, procedures and processes. And when we look at these OECD comparisons, we, we see quite a lot of people in, in Ireland and in other parts of Europe and around the world have low literacy levels and have low problem solving abilities. And that's where health professionals have to remember that it's, a, it's not what you think that should be done, it's about what your parents can realistically deliver uh, and without any stress and consistently deliver. So it's simple, 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 always works. This is eczema herpetigum. You need to be aware of this. This patient needs to, to be referred to hospital for treatment. This is another eczema herpetigum encroaching on the eye. Just be aware of these, these are medical emergencies. And this is uh, impetigo, which you can treat with oral antibiotics yourself. So be aware of infection and including fungal infection like this, which can again be treated in primary care without necessarily hospital input. Be aware about food allergy and the, the in, impact between food and the skin barrier. We know that some people will say, well, look, eczema is all about food, food allergy. And we get preparations like this coming into the clinic where people get very confused about it. And we can have these kind of referrals where children are allergic to everything. So let's look at the let's look at the real the science. Eczema is a barrier defect with an activated uh, skin uh, barrier, so it, it picks up allergens all the time and drives them. What we see is we get a lot of egg and peanut allergy and milk, but these do not cause eczema. They're there as an additional add-on to eczema. They're not the cause of it. And if we look at the other way around, nearly everybody in childhood who has food allergies also has some degree of eczema or atopic dermatitis. So we can see food allergy in this context. It's a, it's a balance. If you've got leaky skin barrier and, and low exposure to food, you will get food allergy. If you get good exposure through the gut and a good barrier, you're much less likely to have food allergy. And it's about balancing these out. And that's where you bring food allergy into managing eczema and understand it but avoiding foods will not cure eczema. Remember, food allergy presents like this, acute urticaria and angioedema very shortly after exposure to the food. So I want to thank you for, for listening to the talk today. I hope that's given you some tips and pointers and I appreciate your attention. Thank you very much.